On today's episode of Homeworthy, we're taking you inside the colorful and cheerful home of Dallas-based interior designer Cynthia Collins. Her 1940s charm-filled home is fanciful and layered with colors and patterns and the most fabulous pink couch. The home is a feast for the eyes. Hope you enjoy. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hi, I'm Cynthia. Welcome into my Dallas home. My name's Cynthia Collins. I'm an interior designer in Dallas and welcome to my living room. I can't wait to show you around. I have been in this career forever. Um, 37 years ago, I started with an interior designer, worked for her for seven years, got my footing, learned how to travel, learned how to shop um, overseas, learned how to work with clients, and um, then I left uh, that business, started my own 30 years ago, started Collins Interiors, and I've been doing it ever since. When we bought this house, it was heavy, full of books, no light, um, very little windows, and it had it was obviously very dated. It hadn't been redone in probably 50 years, but it had a soul that felt good. So you walked in and it felt loved and lived and there were dogs and books and interest and, and collectibles and beautiful things. Just a lot for a lot older couple and but it had a really good feel so people when they come in and they spend the night now they always say I feel like this house has a really good soul we thought we could save a lot but once they left we realized that that was not the case so lots had to be done so we really pretty much started over we added windows we added paneling we um, redid some of the spaces it was only a two-bedroom house and we needed a three bedroom house. So we had to, without adding on, we had to kind of reconfigure some of the spaces. Um, I did think some of the wallpapers that she had were lovely, but it, they weren't salvageable. So we had to start over on that. Um, some, a lot of the electrical, obviously the, the fixtures we redid, um, just to be a lot, a lot more creative with it. Um, and we did, as we go through, we did find a lot of things that we saved. The Cheryl Wagner door hardware, the, uh, the black potty, the, um, there's a lot of little things I'll show you that we did keep that, that I, I love that we kept it. Um, I live with my husband of 34 years. Um, I just lost my golden retriever, so that was that's been hard. But I'm I'm going to get another one, um, and then I have three boys that don't live here anymore, but they are in and out all the time and eat with us often. So it's just the two of us right now. But I feel like we have a very active house. We are in my entry, and I opened up the door so I'd get a lot of light in here. My old entry was tiny, like it's so small, the dog fit in the entry and that was it. And you had to like walk over the dog to get outside. So I had this nice big entry. So I wanted to make it kind of homey and, and a place you might plop down. So I decided we definitely needed a sofa because who doesn't need a circular sofa with like animals all over it? So I did a sofa for gathering and I thought it might be fun to walk in and have a bar right when you walk in next to the sofa so people could gather. So the bar was a closet, just a coat closet. And I don't need a coat closet, I need a bar. So I opened it up and my favorite wallpaper man uh, who probably is about to kill me, I decided I wanted the whole thing wallpapered and all the drawers which is not a very um, easy thing to do. So we wallpapered the whole thing as kind of a little bit of an experiment to see, see is that gonna even work for a client? So like, is all the paper gonna peel off when I open it? 
Oh, I just stash all my alcohol in the bottom and uh, we just have enjoyed, we've enjoyed this space and it feels homey. It's not, it's not too formal. It's a place where we can all gather. I love to collect and I like to change up the collection. I don't, I don't get rid of them. I just like to move it and change it. It's creative to me. It's like a little piece of art. So you'll notice as we walk around, there's collections all over the place. This is cloisonne, but I love the deep blue mixing, mixing it with these lapis boxes that I bought in Paris. So a lot of things that I collect, I try to like pull in other things that might be not of that vintage that might make things kind of interesting and definitely interesting to me because I have different memories with different things. Even over here, I have a funny little mobile that I bought in Paris at the flea market. So it's just whimsical and fun and it isn't anything fine, but I love it and has a happy memory. So in here, because there's so much color, I decided this whole situation needed to get neutral because it, it, it's kind of crazy. And so um, I decided to go ahead and just take these little paper dolls that I found in, um, at a flea market, frame them all, and they were probably from the 50s, and frame them all just very simply so that it, it kind of it takes, I don't know, the edge off of quite such a busy space. And um, I love my bright green uh, fixture that came from London with all the little tassels on it. As you can tell, as we walk through, I love uh, Chinese export. And I love that how it came into the European market and just the whimsy of it all. Now we're gonna go in the dining room because there's some really awesome things I wanna show you in here. In here, originally, this had this beautiful Gracie wallpaper. And I came in many times when they lived here and it just looked lovely. So when I bought the home, I was excited to use the paper because it was just such pretty colors. And I got in here and all of it had faded behind every single piece of furniture and every mirror and every piece of art. It was like a little like dark line around every one of it. So we had to start over, which was fine. But, um, I have a friend in the plaster business. He's been around for, the plaster business has been around over 100 years. And he is a younger guy, bought the company and is bringing it back in a vibrant way for architects and designers. So it's just a, a it's like going to the flea market for plaster. It's just fun. So anyway, he did this little border on the ceiling for me that is a little Chippendale uh, fretwork. And I painted all of it kind of a, a gray blue and a high gloss. I just love it. And um, went with a two-tone paper. So I thought about even going back to Gracie and getting the same one, but I like the way this turned out. So in here, this is obviously, we don't have a breakfast room, so we eat in here all the time. These chairs, I think I have 14 of them, and they um, were bought, there's two different kinds. So some of them have this top to them and some of them don't. Um, and so they're not really the same chair, but it's very hard to find 14 chairs that match. So um, I keep six of them over at my sister-in-law's house across the street. And then when we're having 14 people, I go over to her house and get the extra six so that we can all share. Um, but I bought these in England and this is a 40s table that I got in um, France and I have a lot of English antiques that that I love this is being one of them but this also is I collect different silver things and so these are all silver um, napkin rings and then even under here I have cinnabar so some Chinese export cinnabar but um, so I use a lot of the things in the dining room. Since I don't have a dumb waiter, we, we stash china and things like that. Like I always put these hurricanes, these are my grandmothers, I always put these hurricanes on the table and we flip flop them back. This piece I'm crazy about. So this is um, a, a bar. So on the bottom, it has a little spigot. And so you put this like in the yard, we had a party last night, you put it in the yard, put all your wine, put all your ice in there, and then it drains into the yard. And then the inside of it is copper. 
and it has a hole in the bottom. So you can just stash all your drinks in there and it drains and then it comes back in here. Uh, this is from the 1840s, so a lot of the English pieces are Georgian. This little man I bought in Paris. It is not anything special. It's not expensive. I just, doesn't he look happy? I just like the way he looked. He just looked like he's having a nice time. So I saw him and it's just one of those things you just want to put in the corner and makes you smile. This wallpaper is made by George Spencer and I have worked with the same wallpaper guy for probably 30 years. He is spicy and will let you know what he thinks and he also has a soft heart on the inside and did me a million favors on this house and one of his handiworks is uh, in here he did this vent for me. So this is one of those tacky kind of Home Depot type vents that's metal and he just took it and covered the whole thing and cut it and it is perfect like the the lines of every little piece of the fern all of it matches up kind of a little piece of art this piece uh is by linda ridgeway and linda ridgeway is repped at tally dunn um what i love about this is this is um pencil charcoal the whole idea that somebody can do this is just mind-boggling to me that they can take something as ordinary as like a blazer like this and with all the folds and be able to do that uh, in a in in that way it's just i saw it and just loved it and i sell a lot of things that i have and this is one of the pieces that i've held on to along with a couple of other things you're going to see we are in the living room now and the living room is our place to hang out. So it's not a living room as in a formal living room. It means living room like we live here. So half of the living room is about TV and hanging out and fits a lot of people for this small of a space, which is on purpose. We even use that little tiny bench and pull that out for more people to sit down on. But this is an area we hang out at night, lay down on the couch, get comfortable. We um, put a TV on this wall. I know it's not the prettiest, but it, it totally functions. And when I walk in the room, I don't have to see it. <laughs> um, we did split the room in half, even though the mantle is in the middle, instead of facing all the furniture this way, it would have been really difficult to split the room in half. And since we don't have a den, it's really important that we have different seating areas. I like to have different light, different points of view to see, and different different places to go. So you feel like you're experiencing something in a different way. So on this side, because we don't have a breakfast room, we use this coffee table sometimes to have a dinner party. So I just take the pillows off the, the sofa, plop them on the floor, and then I do a, um, a tablecloth on the top and we sit in, on the floor and have a nice party. But I mean, I've had 10 people on the floor here, uh, which makes for a fun party. And then we open the doors and um, it just gives us another spot to sit and enjoy. Um, one of the things I feel like a lot of times this end of the room ends up being more of conversation area. So if I'm having a meeting, if people are coming over for a drink or just having a visit, this is more the side of the room that we usually um, hang out in. I always change up my accessories on, on these tabletops. Um, it just brings me joy to see things differently. So I, it might look like this right now, but next month it won't look like that anymore. So I just kind of move it around. So this couch I think is 12 feet long. So if I laid here and somebody else laid there, you still wouldn't, your feet wouldn't touch. But this was really fun for COVID because I could have somebody here, somebody here, open the doors and we could spread out. But it's just, why not take up the entire space when you're, I think my mind kept going, like if I don't have enough room to sit in, I need to make sure I have enough sitting space in the rooms that I have. So we just took advantage of the whole wall. So when we're looking at these big rooms, you end up having a lot of furniture and that's too much for things to, for you to take in. So you've got to have some things to kind of 
take it down a notch. So whenever I have something that's really crazy, this manual Econovas, um uh, chinoiserie chair. It has so much going on and I love it. I've had it for, I don't know, 15 years. If I'm using something like this, then other things around it kind of have to calm down a little bit. So I have some solid sofas, solid pair of chairs. Oftentimes, even in my house, but for clients, a lot of times we might have pairs of chairs and then two occasional chairs. So you don't have all pairs all the time. Same with lamps. I love a pair of lamps, but oftentimes you just want one off to do their thing and be artistic or have a different way of seating. And it's also for me another opportunity to use fabric because I love fabric. I love texture. I love the, the what it does for a room. And so if I don't have a pair and I have a single one, then I get to, to do something else that's different and fun. On this side of the room, um, I bought these um, in France. I loved how low they were. So when you walk in the room, even though I don't have much space, they're so low. I don't. They're not even in my my um, my vision. They don't come in on you. So it's the same amount of seating, but they just don't have any bulk. Um, normally, you'd put a side table in between. We just treat it like a little love seat, even though they're chairs. My style is very personal. So it, I, I can't actually say I have a style. I love to have things that I've, I've collected with my travels that remind me of happy memories with friends, with my work family, with my um, a lot of memories with my friends at Blueprint that we have traveled with over the years and had so much fun. But also my grandmothers, um, some a lot of things that came from the person who used to live here. We came to the estate sale and just had a ball going through her things and finding what we wanted to save. But I, I really love antiques. I really love um, things that I bought in Paris from the 40s. Um, some Italian pieces from the 40s. Um, I love color, I love pattern, I love mixing it. I think some of that's due to, because when you're an interior designer, you're not scared of things. So you can just create and keep mixing and, and enjoy the mixture of it all. And, and I love to change it up. So even last week, I took all the things off the top of the tabletops and just switched it all around and moved it around. So right now I'm seeing things in a different way than what, what, what I normally do. My favorite thing about this house is that I get to use every bit of it and my yard is a part of this house. So we sit in it every day, we entertain outside and I love the people around me. I just couldn't live life without them. So I have neighbors that are my family and family that are my neighbors and they're a part of our daily life in and out of our house and it's definitely life-giving. We are in the kitchen and I love to cook. So this is probably the room I spend the most time in. Um, we came in here and hopefully we can show you some before pictures of this room. There were no windows in the whole space in the whole space. So we've added, I, sometimes when you don't have something, you go way overboard. It's like when everything is white, then all of a sudden you want color. Or if you have way too much color, then you want everything white or beige or black. That's how this was. It was so dark. I just, I wanted white walls. I wanted windows and, and open it up. So um, we um, came in, found the tile first love the tile it's very different than what i've been living with in the past so that was fun for me to just have a, a lot of pattern so i added that on both sides did a little in front of the um, island over there we put it on the face of the island and um i wanted all my china crystal silver in this room and not in your silver box or not under a bed or not on the top shelf. So a lot of things that I, uh, I'll show you over here, um, things like this, I can get right to my silver 
Matter, these, matter of fact, these were my grandmother's in her silver drawer, which is funny, but I've got everything right here at my fingertips so I can use it and I can get to it quickly. And in here, I've got my, I've got china and I have my glasses and everything that I need. Um, my old house, I felt like you had to get on a ladder or you had to go get that big containers out of stuff. So I have enjoyed that. One of my favorite patterns was actually from the girl, the woman who lived here. So she had gone to, to actually had gone to China and had these made for her. And so um, they're hand painted and I bought a set at her estate sale and I've used it and used it, but it's fun to have something of hers in my house that, that we can all enjoy. But I obviously, I like China, so I, I, I love this piece. It's very simple. I bought these um, from a hotel in Paris that was getting rid of their um, their whole collection. I think I bought a hundred plates or something silly. But what was fun about this is not that this is so special, but anything you put on here goes. So if I add anything on here, no matter what color or pattern, nothing seems to fight with it. So even like a turquoise. So it's been, it's been a fun thing. They're heavy since they were from a hotel, so it's not fine china, so we use them often. This is in the corner of the kitchen, and it's a dog bowl situation that we set up that has the faucet in it. So you don't have, you know how a lot of times you have dog bowls and people kick it and the water flies everywhere? This is the best, everybody needs to do this. So literally, you, all you do is do this, it fills up the whole bowl, and then the dog can't splash it. There's not water on the floor and it gives you a spot. And then all your dog food can be here. So it's like you can go straight and have it all in one. I love this thing. And then this is kind of fun. This be nice or go away came from my old house. So it was at the back door at my old house. And I was like, we need to bring that back over. So when we do this type of thing, you just cut into the hardwoods and put a brass liner all the way around. And then your cocoa mat just goes right in it. And those cocoa mats you can cut with an X-Acto or with something, you know, some sharp scissors. So even like, let's say I wanted something else, I could still get it back into that hole. We have a little courtyard off the kitchen and I thought it might be fun for y'all to come with me and see how we use this space. So we use this space all the time for just an extra area for dining. Um, we had an awning uh, man make our poles up here so we could permanently um, tie in our party lights for nighttime. But this is such a nice area because it only seats six. It's very easy to do off the kitchen. And I had a bunch of tablecloths made in lots of different fabrics. I keep them under my stairs and then they're there. They're always ready and I can change it up and make it feel different, make it feel really casual. I even have like some great Chinese silk uh, pieces for if you're having Thai food or you're having Chinese food or you're trying to do something fun like that. So this is just an area that feels special at night. And here is our screen porch. So come on in. So in Dallas, we need a screen porch. We have mosquitoes all the time. And our weather is really nice in the winter. So we spend pretty much from October to May in areas like this. Um, it's not that cold, so you can still use it in the winter. But um, I bought some of these really great exterior chairs and exterior fabrics. So it feels like a really, um, it feels nice just to be outside, especially if you've been exercising and things, just keep, keep going. Uh, this area out here we use for Mahjong. So whenever I have the girls over and we're playing Mahjong, We'll get our snacks or our food in there and it's just a step away. And I usually use a tablecloth. So I had tablecloths made out here that match that other table. So I have had parties for 10 and just split, split people up and then, then their, their tables match. But we use this all the time. This is our little tiny green TV room. I mean, it's tiny, look. 
it's like a little New York bedroom. Um, so anyway, this room we added because this bedroom was big and it really bothered me that it was off the entry. So we just put a wall here, lacquered the whole thing, this like lovely shade of green and just made it super cozy. So it's enough for three people. So we have a chair here that I've had forever. And then we have two little spots to sit down. I did all down so it just smushes and you can just let put your head here and lay down and watch TV or have a visit. But the scale of this room is fantastic. I think a lot of people, when you're looking at plans, especially here in Texas, we have enough room to, to get bigger. And so these rooms get bigger and bigger and bigger and you gravitate towards smaller spaces when you're alone or with two people. And so I really love when I can get my clients to, to find small little spots where they can go and be alone or be with one other person so that they feel kind of enveloped in that space. This is our bedroom and it's not a very big bedroom, but it is very cozy. It reminds me of a little hotel room. So there's not a lot of things in here furniture wise, but it's just right. It feels really good and cozy. Um, we decided to keep the bookshelves that were already here and instead of removing them or pulling out a space for your bed, we just left them. I have lots and lots of books, so that was an easy thing to add. Um, so what I did was I put the bed on purpose in front of here, and then I made this headboard really low. A lot of times we'll do that the headboard a whole foot taller than this, which would be a little heavy on this wall. Um, so it's low, but I have all my things right by me and I love to read and it just, it feels nice. It feels just cozy to have all your things all around you. I went with this deep green, uh, from Leotine Linen from New Orleans. I just love the feeling of it. And then I just repeated the fabric over and over again because it is a small room and I felt like it felt better just to have the same thing and not have a bunch of different patterns going on. I had this awesome light fixture that I bought in London and it was this uh, gorgeous glass globe, this Georgian glass globe, but it had like yellow etched glass in it. And we were getting ready for um, a wedding and the suitcases were on the bed open. And for some reason, my old adult son decided it was a good idea to hit golf balls inside of the bedroom. and. And he called panicked and he had taken his chip shot back and gone like this and the golf club hit the yellow beautiful yellow and glass shattered all over went all in our suitcase <laughs> it was such a mess so i ended up leaving there going to one of our antique dealers here in dallas that has the most beautiful glass a lot of murano and a lot of interesting 40s fixtures and bought this brand new and it turned out beautifully and I love it but every time I look at it I do kind of think of the yellow one that was here first. Okay I almost forgot to show y'all. I'm gonna go in here there's a little hidden bathroom a little powder bath uh, before we go upstairs. In here I decided to do a pure fray paper Kind of funky for Pierre Frey. It doesn't look like their work, but I love it. It's just super plain black and white. I went with it because originally this bathroom had a black potty and a black sink. And I was like, we're keeping that. It's kind of kind of moody and, and has a different vibe. And so I kept that. I had to replace the floors. So I just went with a plain black marble. And um, she had Cheryl Wagner um, fixtures, which I kept. And I just decided to have all kinds of little collectibles that I love in here. Um, I, I love the just the simple black sconces that are just plain. Um, and this is one of my favorite photographs from the 70s from the POW coming home. And I, it, it gets me because I was a child of this era where we all had POW bracelets and it's just such a thing. But that photographer got every single person's foot off the ground running to meet him. 
we're gonna go upstairs and see two guest rooms. Okay, now we're in the guest room. And this was originally his library. And so all four sides had lots and lots and lots of books, but his bookshelves were 24 inches deep. So we could have two, two sets, you know, bookshelves are 12 inches. He is 24, so we could have two sets of books. So it really encroached upon this room. So we got rid of that, made it into a bedroom, put a tiny bathroom in his closet, but we did it so we could go ahead and have three beds in here. Since we only have two guest rooms, I wanted to sleep as many people as we could. So we just kept it going with the twin beds. I wanted this room to be very cheerful and um, I imagined it originally for my girlfriends when they came because my boys are grown up and they have their own apartments and they're not coming back to spend the night. So I wanted it to little, be a little bit more feminine. This purple settee was at my old house. I have really fond memories of this in my living room. So we decided to go ahead and keep it, even though there's not purple anywhere in the wallpaper. And then I just piped this in that same shade of purple just to kind of pull it together a little bit. Um, but it seemed like I wanted some place for people to sit and both sides of the room have doors so you can't use a chair. And so a settee was just the perfect thing to have in here. This mobile was made by my friends at work. So I was having a really hard day, a little period of time that was really rough at home and, and some hard things were happening. And they each gave me a sentiment on uh, encouraging me for my, my really just my life in general. Um, I found this little mobile at the Guggenheim in, that, in the little gift shop where they have those darling mobiles. And I just put fishing wire on it. And there's, it's just a thoughtful thing to me that somebody gave me. It's a fun way to, to have it instead of in a book. This is our pink bedroom, because who doesn't need a pink bedroom? <laughs> We went crazy on pink on everything. Um, and I love this room. I love to read in this room. I love to, to think in this room. I love to write in this room. It has really good vibes. Um, we went ahead and did this out of upholstery. And I know, you know, we don't do upholstery walls very often. It feels very kind of dated, but in a space like this with these colors, it does not feel dated at all. It feels cozy and quiet and good. And I decided to do the same exact linen on the window treatment. So it just kind of everything turns pink. Um, this bed was given to us as a wedding gift. So this was our bed that we had originally um, when we first got married. And so I wanted to keep it, but it is kind of a little bit if without all this dressing, it's kind of a tiny boring. And the headboard was dark brown and real short. So um, we came in and recovered it in this hot pink, just because <laughs> why don't you need a short hot pink headboard? So um, I don't know, it just, it feels good. When you're in here too, even just having panels of like 12 inches on either side, when your head's back there, you feel very enclosed. Something that's a great tip, usually these beds are, the shaker style beds, they're up off the floor and there's no dust skirt. So what I've done is added these dust skirts to the bottom of the rail and then it hides all the these things that you don't, don't ever use or really want to see all your old photos, but you don't have anywhere to put them. So the whole thing is filled with you know, mementos and things like that that you rarely get to, but at least there's a home for them under there, hidden. Home is a place where I want people to come in here and feel comfortable and, and eat and visit and stay and be able to pop in anytime they want uh, in a very casual way. Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.